Welcome to SM Live at GSX 2023. I'm your host, Teresa Anderson, Editor-in-Chief of Security Management Magazine and VP of Content for ASIS International. Watch these screens throughout the week for insights from thought leaders and industry experts, as well as for more information on ways to connect, share, and learn here in Dallas. The cannabis industry has gone mainstream. States around the United States and jurisdictions around the globe are regulating and professionalizing the field. ASIS will be launching an ANSI standard on cannabis security in the next few months. Tim Sutton of Guidepost Solutions is here to tell us what a standard will mean to the industry. The cannabis industry is unique because of the way it developed Many facilities and retail stores have been left lacking in security and they need guidance. Standards for cannabis security will help in three major areas. One, the protection of assets, including employees and customers. Two, prevention of burglaries and robberies. And three, normalizing security procedures and processes, including good manufacturing practices. Cybersecurity continues to top the list of security concerns for practitioners around the world. Two leading experts in the field are here with us to discuss the privacy implications around cyber threats and the most important issues for security professionals to watch out for in the coming year. Well, identity theft definitely is one of the threats that is increasing dramatically, and we have to take measurements seriously to take care about the information and the data of everybody around that, which is employees, which is customers, which is everything around the supply chain. So just in 2020, the cost, it was $56 billion. That is not, it's not, I, I, I mean, a quantity that you just said, Oh, it's not important because it's increasing, right? So there is a ton of standards that we can use just to take care about that measurements and th those procedures. And of course, the, the normatives are very important. So normatives depends on what is your business, doesn't matter the size of, the, the, of your business, but where you operate. So in, in the past, everything was centralized. But now, with this, taking care about the, the data is, is, is not the same thing because it depends on the regulations and the laws each of the country and city that you are working with. So let's start with privacy, right? Privacy is a human right, but privacy is also related with transparency. How I am manage your information that has something that has to be clear for the others. I mean, for the owner of the data. And that's why identity theft is just being like super lack and there is a tons of databases that are selling in the dark web. So it's because, not it's because we are just collecting the data, it's probably because we don't have the correct measurements just to take care about them. And that is something that we have to, to be in our mind and focus on. So I think this important topic, there is a ton of standards that we can follow just to put in place the proper measurements and measure them. That is something important. I mean, it's not something that you put in place and let it like, okay, it's done. So it's important that companies, it doesn't matter the size, it doesn't matter what they do, take and put in place the proper measurements and monitoring them all the time because risk change all the time and the world change all the time and it's very fast and it's not easy just to just follow the same speed, right? So it's important the, the security procedures because sometimes there is a confusion between, oh, what is privacy, what is security, what is data, what is information and it's everything is related but the transparency is important. And by design, we have to take care about data. 
I think today the most challenging thing security professionals are facing is upskilling the technicians that are out in the field. We've got all of these risks, we've got technology, um, we're trying to mitigate some of those risks with the technology, but if they're not implemented properly, then we're gonna have a big problem. Uh, when I started as a technician, we had to learn about angles and fields of view and backlight compensation. Now all of that's automated, but we're really not investing in the technicians to upskill them to be able to work in today's networking environment. So I think if we invest in that, make sure that they have the education that they need, we're gonna also mitigate a lot of the risks and threats by putting the technology in securely. School safety and security is one of the most critical issues facing the security industry. Experts here at GSX have insights into the most important steps schools can take to prevent violence. Good day, folks. I, my name is Jeff Slotnick, and I've been asked to speak to you today on behalf of ASIS regarding school security. Nothing is more important than our most precious assets, which are our children. A good school security program is comprised of three legs of a stool. Behavioral threat management, physical security, and emergency operations and planning. In order to facilitate that, you know, uh, let's take each of those in, in order. Behavioral threat management is important because it helps us to identify those that may be in crisis ahead of time that would perpetrate school violence. A good physical security program does not start at your front door. It's not about magnetometers or school resource officers, although those are a component of physical security. We want to push school physical security out to the street. A good school security program uh, includes physical security which is detection, delay, and response. We want to push out detection as far as we can away from the building. We want to have enough delays in the system to allow our first responders to get there in time to stop the incident before it even gets into the school building. Once it's in the building, it's too late. Good locks, good doors, locking systems, access control, vestibules, protected uh, glazing with wire reinforcement, uh, as well as uh, ballistic films uh, on vestibules uh, can prevent a lot of issues. Having an emergency operations plan so that when an incident does occur, we know what to do. You know, waiting for an incident to occur to practice something is too late. When an incident occurs is the time for leadership. So in order to be good leaders, we have to know what we're going to do. And that requires exceptional training and developing in our plans, policies, and procedures, a tabletop exercises and things like that. You know, you ask any child what to do in a fire and they'll tell you, they will count it down, right? drop cover roll or escort out the building two by two. Uh, the last person out the door closes the window, turns out the lights and shuts the door and we all walk out the building in an orderly fashion, right? I learned that in elementary school. We need to have the same approach to security and other emergencies as well, whether that's an evacuation, a shelter in place or a lockdown. Those are the things that we can do today, all right, to ensure a good school security program. We have not lost a child in a fire since 1953. It's time that we put the same regulatory emphasis on school security to ensure good programs. Taking the next step towards a successful career can be tricky for anyone. It's even more challenging for those transitioning from a military role to a job in the private security sector. Our next guests have some tips for those looking to navigate that change. Mikhail, I've learned that there are two key factors to success when it comes to preparing for your transition. The first is having a strategy. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely, Eric. I think having a plan is vital to a successful transition. In order to have a good plan, you have to give yourself plenty of time. So ensure you are um, planning ahead of time, whether it's months or years out, for your transition from the military into the private sector. And we're not the first ones to do it, right? Thousands have come before us. Right, right. So find a mentor. So find somebody that has either um, transitioned before you into whatever field you're looking to do, security field or specific company or um, government job, whatever you're looking to do. Uh, find somebody to guide you uh, is 
it'll be super helpful in the long run. And guide you to resources. They're all out there. Again, we, we're not the first people to do it. Absolutely. There are a plethora of resources out there, almost too many sometimes. So how do you weed through that? Well, you talk to somebody that was successful in doing it before you, and uh, they can point you in that right direction and make sure that you're um, getting on that right path to success. The second thing I've learned, it's a game changer. It's the biggest force multiplier, and that's professional certification. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, again, it's just, it is vital, I think. Uh, for myself specifically, um, my certification was a requirement for my job. Uh, so it was um, tremendous help in getting me and my foot into the door uh, right away from my transition from the military into the private sector. So if you uh, have the ability to get your PSP or CPP even prior to your transition, get that on, the, get that on your resume and have your mentor help you with that. Have them help you study um, and, and pass that exam and uh, you'll be golden. Game changer. Yes, yes sir. ASIS would love to hear about your attendee experience. We're asking attendees to please share their testimonials on why they attend and what they feel are the key benefits of GSX. We've made it as easy as possible for you to capture your story at your convenience. Just visit the link via this QR code, and once there, you'll see a prompt. Click on the question to begin your recording. You can re-record as many times as you like. Don't miss this opportunity. What are you most looking forward to here at GSX? I have to say the educational sessions. I'm an instructor in one of the sessions that's going on right now. It's a workshop on facility security design. But most importantly, the amount of education that you get here at GSX, you'll find out not only as a novice, but also as a veteran, all the aspects of security and just understanding what it is, what it does, how beneficial it is for you. So it's unparalleled in the industry in terms of what you'll learn. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So what are you looking most forward to here at GSX? Oh, well, particularly I've come a long way from Western Australia all the way to Dallas. It's, a, it's a, a long trip, but what I find is catching up with old friends, but particularly meeting new people as well. We can have all the best online systems we can. We, we can share ideas, but it's nothing better than seeing people in person. And of course, all the uh, um, um, displays and the education sessions are real, really a benefit. Thank you very much. Thank you.